I'm Craig Kenneth, a relationship coach and a psychotherapist. Every relationship is different and every breakup is different. Work with me and you'll get professional help on your situation. And if you're in no contact, focused on personal growth, my workbook series, The Knowledge, will help you make changes like you've never made before. Available now at AskCraig.net. Hi there, I'm Coach Craig Kenneth and I'm Coach Victoria and in this video we're going to be talking about power struggles in relationships mm. and you're like wait what power struggles well you believe it or not there are a lot of power struggles now they're not usually coming out in the beginning early stage of the relationship where you're you know still so excited about that person mm -hmm. but once you move past that and you're getting into longer term relationships where attachment issues are really coming out, that's when you're going to see some power struggles. Mm -hmm. Okay. And you have to be able to navigate those because if you don't, you're constantly going to be at war with your partner for control and trying to like dominate the other person. A lot yeah. of people do it and they don't realize it. Mm -hmm. And a lot of times we can get into this mindset that we're in competition with our partner rather than it really being a team. Mm -hmm. And so this idea can really spoil a relationship quickly if you're trying to just be right, if you're trying to win, if you have this type of game mindset to your relationship. So in today's video, we want to touch on this and also give you some helpful tips as to how to extinguish this power struggle and nip it in the bud before it turns into something much bigger. So there are many ways that we can have power over each other in relationships. Some of the more practical ways are, you know, if there is a higher earner in mm -hmm. the relationship, if there is somebody who usually makes a lot of the decisions. But it can also be things such as being from the country that the two of you live in. Mm -hmm. Let's say that you, know, you are a migrant from a different country and aren't as fluent in the language or don't understand the systems. You being from that country have a level of uh, acquaintance with how the world works sure. and that gives you a level of power there. Yeah. And even the language, you know, mm -hmm. being able to communicate with others clearly and get your point across. It could also be things like if the two of you work together or are in the same business and one person has a higher position than the other, yeah. that can cause a power struggle. Yeah. I've also seen teacher-student relationships or relationships that blossom in the real world naturally where there was a hierarchy mm -hmm. in that setting. So be it a job, be it a type of skill that somebody is better at the skill than you are mm -hmm. or a hobby. Um, so it could be those things. Yeah. Another way to have a power struggle is also social collateral. If you are more popular or know more people or are charming in a way that your partner isn't, you mm -hmm. know, that can be a, a certain level of power that you might have a very well-established support system when they don't, leaving them a little bit more vulnerable. Yeah. So there's many, many, many different ways that uh, power differences can come about in a relationship. They can even come down to family history. You know, being with a partner who has an established family and therefore more resources from their family than you do if your family is dispersed or not a, like a united force. Mm -hmm. So there's so many different ways that power differences can show up. And even if you you move in with one person and it's mm -hmm. their house. Yes, yeah. Then it's like they feel like they are in control because it was their house first. Mm -hmm. Or maybe they own the house they're not renting it and so they feel like it's theirs to do how they want it to do be mm -hmm. and so you feel like a guest there instead of feeling like it's your home mm -hmm. that's a great example yeah. and even cars you know if you and your partner are sharing a car and it's under one of their names then they can have that sort of power over you and you, know, you always feel like you're asking permission even if you understand that the two of you have decided to share these things so these things can come up and they cause breakups all of the time Mm -hmm. um, there's two main ways that I see power imbalances causing breakups. The first being if the person with the higher power is challenged. That person likely is not used to that challenge. Mm -hmm. And sometimes people in power don't even realize that they are in power, mm -hmm. such as the example of being uh, in the country that you're living in. Yeah. You know, when I went to go live with my partner in Norway, mm -hmm. he had 
much more power in that country than I did. Yeah. You know, I remember even the people in the in the office doing my visa and all of that were rude to me. And I remember feeling like, what is what is happening here? Like, I'm an American. How dare you? I know, I have my, <laughs> I, I need to have my rights and deserve to be respected, <laughs> you know? <laughs> so it was a really jarring experience and, and opened my eyes to what people experience all the time all around the world. And so being in a relationship with him, he didn't even realize the privilege that it was to be from that country and for everything to go so smoothly for mm -hmm. him, even something as simple as a grocery store interaction. And so... So I became very dependent on him. And there would be times, you know, if he were here visiting in the U.S. where I had that type of power, mm -hmm. you know, where interactions were easy for me. And sometimes I didn't see it and I, I would see him struggle. And I'm like, come on, we need to figure these things out, <laughs> speed it up. You know, so sometimes we can be blind to our own power in relationships. Yeah. Back to the two ways that I see this causing mm -hmm. breakups. The first being if that power is challenged. Mm -hmm. And the second being if the person with less power becomes accustomed to that state and becomes overly dependent. So they become used to not making the decisions mm -hmm. and they become complacent in a way of, oh, this other person's in power, I'm going to let them handle it, I'm going to let them deal with it. Yeah. Which is a very disempowering stance and, and can cause relationships to crumble. Another point I want to touch on here too, just going back on that one partner being more dependent on the other, is this idea of weaponized incompetence. Some big words. I don't know if mm. you all have heard about this concept, but basically using your position of less power as a, a means of getting others to do things for you, almost a, a manipulation tactic. Mm -hmm. So like you're acting kind of helpless, like a learned helplessness. Mm -hmm. and, and so you're constantly asking that person to do things for you, mm -hmm. which actually gives you some power. Yeah. Yeah, because right. <laughs> yeah, it's so ironic, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, because now you're getting that person to do what you want. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, makes sense. So this is another scenario that can pop up in a relationship where, you know, you hear one partner is like, man, I'm, I'm giving, I'm giving, I'm giving and doing all of these things. I wish my partner was a bit more independent and would help me out here, at least helping out doing some chores or something to give me a hand. So it can be a situation like that mm. to where at some point a person has limits a person gets exhausted and you know the relationship ends and then it's afterwards that you realize oh i became complacent oh i thought they were never going to leave yeah that's a big one mm -hmm. so how do we work with these power struggles ideally it would be best for both parties in a relationship to have a feeling of power so even if there are these very practical and concrete power differences, let's say somebody is always going to be a higher earner or the house is just in their name, that's just how it is. There are ways for both parties in a relationship to feel empowered mm -hmm. and that's really by increasing that feeling of safety which we talk about all of the time. Mm -hmm. Do you feel okay in advocating for your needs or do you feel like you have to ask you know, to use the pool or, you know, to paint a wall in the home. It doesn't feel equal. Right. Yeah. So as long as you are empowering your partner to speak up for what they want and what they need, then that can help balance the emotional power of a relationship. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So how do we cause our partner to feel more powerful and to feel like they have a right to speak up for what they want and what they need? I am taking this from a Psych Today article, which has been very helpful, mm -hmm. and it's by Jeremy Nicholson. Mm -hmm. So he wrote this article talking about power imbalances in relationships, and that was very interesting. I hope you nerds are still sticking with me. <laughs> this is a long <laughs> one. It's a long one. They fell asleep 12 minutes ago. <laughs> they lost power on their phone. They lost power. <laughs> I'm draining them on their of, their, phone. of their power throughout this video. No, but... He talks about some ways to extinguish these power imbalances. The first one being honesty and transparency with both yourself and with your partner. Mm. Now, I, I find that a lot of people in relationships who think that they have the lesser amount of power are afraid of, of challenging, are sure. afraid of bringing things up. They don't want to stir the pot. You know, what if they do take away you know, these privileges or what if, you know, they start to abuse their power? So this fear can really keep you from speaking up. Yeah, no, it, it, we're living in a real world with real world problems like mm -hmm. bills or yeah. so, and you know, or you you go to another country to be with that person. And it's like you feel kind of powerless, mm -hmm. you know, and then you're afraid to speak up. 
yeah. and talk about what's bothering you. It's tough. Another point that he makes is to redefine what power is. So this is really about focusing on your own strengths. A really great example of this that I love is looking at vulnerability as a strength. You know, seeing that, yeah. okay, the fact that I can be open and let you know what I'm really feeling, that to me feels powerful. I feel empowered by that. Or it can be using your unique background or your experiences or your boldness as a strength. Okay, I'm not from Norway, okay, but I made a huge step to be here. I was very bold to go and live in a different country and try this out and really give this a shot. That makes me feel powerful that mm -hmm. I was brave in that way. Yeah. So redefining things um, and reframing things can be very helpful. Absolutely. Another big point he makes is finding win-win solutions. This is hard, um, but it is about finding the option that benefits both parties. Much easier said than done and does take a lot of negotiation. Mm -hmm. A book recommendation that I have is a book called Never Split the Difference that talks about negotiations in general, but some of the concepts can also be applied to relationships. You know that sometimes you do have to work through things and find what works for the both of you, and that's by making requests and seeing if those requests can be met, what you can tolerate, what you will not tolerate. It so, really requires you to be an adult to do oh, this stuff. Yeah. Oh yeah. And if you haven't worked through your issues and your insecurities, a lot of this is going to be tough to navigate. Mm -hmm. You're not going to have the, you're not going to feel like you have the strength to do it or you'll be too scared to do it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, exactly. It really does take a level of courage and also willingness to deal with the consequences. Yeah. Somebody more powerful than me might be mad at me, but remind yourself you are not a child and this is not, you know, a parent or somebody who most likely somebody that you are dependent on for survival. This is a partner, you know, so remind yourself that you have an equal right in this relationship to stand up for what you want and your needs are important too. Absolutely. Power dynamics are always going to come up with two people in different ways. And it's when it's coming out in your romantic relationship, it can really hurt the, cer the safety of the connection. And so you really have to be able to be, be aware of these things and address them like an adult. And that's going to take confidence to do it, to stand up for yourself and what you think is fair or trying to be fair to both people because it's not ever going to be completely fair, mm -hmm. right? Because you're constantly having to navigate different issues every day but you certainly don't want one person that feel they have all the power in the situation and when you're going through a breakup it feels like they do yeah but only if you allow it right when you go no contact you're getting some of that power back mm -hmm. and there it's no longer a dynamic of i'm begging you to give me another chance and that's so there's another way that you're seeing power dynamics come up mm-hmm it's always going to happen with two people, but you got to do your best to understand your partner and hopefully have a partner that is willing to understand you and talk about these things. So it's fair and both people are reasonably happy. Mm -hmm. You make a great point about that power imbalance after a breakup and those power differences that existed in the relationship can intensify after a breakup. So if somebody did own a house or, you know, did allow you to use their car or, you mm -hmm. know, did manage the finances. Paying all your bills, yeah, your medical bills, yeah. your mm -hmm, stuff like that. To lose that person can feel, you know, tremendously, pow you know, you feel powerless. Like, yeah. what am I going to do now? How am I going to figure things out for myself? Yep. So I'm hoping that through this video, you're able to think about what does empower you and latch onto those things. You are an adult. You do have some power inherently, I believe everyone does. And so honing in on what your strengths are can be really helpful and really important. That's right. Just remind yourself that you are an adult now and you can take care of yourself. Mm -hmm. And that will keep you centered so you're not like feeling like a, a helpless child that is reliant on somebody to take care of you. Mm -hmm. Okay. Exactly. All right. So hopefully this one's been helpful to you. Of course, if you want to get our help personally, you could do that on my website, askcraig.net. I do email coaching and I do Skype. Coach Victoria is also available for Skype coaching. I'm here whenever you'd like to chat. Just click on her name to schedule with her. 
But that's it for this video. I'm Coach Craig Kenneth. And I'm Coach Victoria. And we will talk with you soon.